the advantage of this. Okay. You're going to wonder why I even bother when I can get buy a $15 spray gun, use my regular air compressor, and go to town spraying my car or whatever you're spraying. The thing is, turbines, HVLP turbines, have much better transfer efficiency. Transfer efficiency is the amount of material that's coming from your cup that lands on the panel. A higher transfer efficiency means more paint got to your panel, not into the air or on the floor. So you want to have a high transfer efficiency because that means is the paint that you buy that costs like $200 for a gallon, you're going to use less of it, which means you can paint more things. So you're saving money in that regard. Not only that, with turbine technology and spray with a turbine, you're also becoming more efficient that you're not creating more overspray to clog up your filters in a spray booth. If you've never cleaned filters in a spray booth with a basement, you don't understand how much particles get stuck there that are wasted sitting in a pile of filters. It should be on the car, not in the filters, because that's just wasteful. So it's, it's also a money thing because you're, you're, you're saving more by using less. So the marketing is giving us a something blue. And it's also giving us all these pictures, but they're not showing anything with a car. They're showing a boat, uh, old school radiator, a wooden thing, a metal thing, a box, chair, some railings, metal, but they're not showing a car. And to be HVL compliant, you have to have a certain amount of PSI at the air cap. And also, to be within a certain just usability, it has to be have enough power to atomize the paint in automotive spray. And so they're not showing it. And even on the website, the disclaimer, temperature and humidity due to those factors are not promoting for automotive. That's their whatever. I'm going to use it for automotive, tell you right now, because to me, automotive is made out of metal, it's made out of plastic, there's, there's, um, and, and really, the way paint works, you might have this cardboard that's called a substrate, then you need to put something on that cardboard that's got to stick to that cardboard, that would be called your primer. And once your primer's on this cardboard, you can put any paint on top of it because your paint needs to cross-link to that primer. So, it doesn't matter to me if it's concrete, wood, cardboard, metal, car's metal. If you primer correctly, you have good adhesion to your substrate, your next coats consecutively will have to grab onto that to get to your top finished coat. They're not promoting it. Maybe they don't have enough R&D into promoting it for automotive, but I'm going to change all that because this is what I want to use. I'm going to use this. I got this from my local Harbor Freight here in Fond du Lac. And I spoke to the manager. She's a very nice lady. And I said, hey, um, Brenda, I want to buy this machine, but I don't know what it's like. I want to hear what it sounds like. Is it possible? Because I just need to know how much air is flowing through here. Because the whole thing with turbine spraying is you need air. Good source of air that's got enough CFM, and enough force. And I was using a four stage setup, but that machine is like an antiquated, it's got a lot of years on it. And that's only a four stage, it's a five stage. But I needed to know what it felt like kind of air it had. So we took it out of the box, uh, plugged it in, turned it on, right away. The sound was definitely, here's what she said, it sounds like a vacuum, a quiet vacuum. And then I felt it like, this has some air. It's got some air, it's gonna work. So I got it. <laughs> this is the five stage Avanti turbine sprayer. The five stage power for larger projects involving heavier body coatings. Now, why did I get this? I'll show you why. Because I am into turbine spraying. I quit using the air compressor to spray stuff. I've been using a turbine machine way back now. So this is the next direction is uh, to get one of these. So I already got the spray gun. Did my own setup with a 3M PPS adapter so I can run a 3M PPS HO cup with it because 
And this is a, not a sponsored video. I paid for all of this with our own hard earned cash. So back to the video, okay. That spray gun comes with a metal cup. And everyone look, gonna look at it and gonna say, that's old school. And I'm gonna say, that is old school. So I made it PPS style. So it's not big and bulky. I think it's more efficient with a 3M PPS because it just is able to, I don't know, that was good back in the day when you could run 75 PSI through your Bink spray gun or whatever spray gun you're using because you needed to create a suction up to feed the paint and then with the turbines now, that pressurizes the cup. But it's still a big heavy cup. So the whole point of it is old school, big and heavy. I'm going new school, maneuverable, fast, light. So it's my setup with my gun and I had to get the machine. <laughs> and the machine also comes with a gun. So now I'll have two guns. I'll have a spray gun for clear and a spray gun for primer. Uh, base coat and clear or primer, you know, but I'll have two of them. So here's what you get. Starts out on top, you get a hose. Okay? Get a hose. This is a hose. And this hose is the hose that comes with it. It's a bigger diameter hose because you want CFM to flow through versus your regular air compressor hose. And this is not going to compress air, it's just going to move it from one, it's like uh, from one place to the other. But it's going to move a lot of it at once. So it needs a bigger. ID inside diameter and these fittings are nice it's a quick connect fitting which is just like the quick connect fitting on my uh, pressure washer so that's cool it has a two style hose with a flexible hose here which all right first of all that was back in the day I'm using a flexilla hose if you see the video my hose, my hose is one hose. That's my setup. So I'm not necessarily endorsing this product. I'm just saying I'm excited about it. And I'm gonna be talking about it. And I'm gonna be using it, but this hose, it's got two hoses. To me, that's one, two. It's two restriction points because that's a free-flowing end right there, which is kind of cool. That's good. So there's two restriction points. I got two restriction points on mine, the gun end and the connecting end. But this hose is a, this hose, it's a heavier hose than what most people are used to. So they're gonna feel like, the hose doesn't feel like a regular air compressor. That's normal. That's why I created my version it feels more like I'm using an air compressor to spray just like here's my other hose with the air compressor see it's like that small now my spraying hose is big but look at the comparison very similar both flexibility is about the same and it, there's no transition in your mind of like oh what I'm just spraying I'm just spraying, okay? So this is a hose, and I'm not gonna use this hose. I don't need to use this hose. I'm gonna use my hose, but you're gonna get a hose if you get this kit. And then you're gonna get some uh, extra filters. The filters look like. If you're gonna paint in a dirty environment full of dust, these filters, they're gonna help keep dust out of the internals of your turbine. But why are you painting in an area full of dust? Put the thing in a clean area so you don't have to think about clogging up these filters. That's one tip I'm gonna give. We already took out of the plastic this morning. And you get a cleaning tool here. Let's see. One looks like it's for cleaning the gun passages this little one right here it's like a it's like a needle 
see that? It's very tiny. Sharp too. Careful. Regular cleaning brush. All right. Interesting that they would give you that little. Like if you ever cleaned uh, the orifices of like a acetylene torch, you know you can clean them out. Gives you an instruction manual. Thing for the spray gun. I don't need any of this because I already <laughs> don't need any of that. But I'll, I'll talk about it in video. So because you're probably not gonna you're gonna be like ah just get to the point. Okay, the point is this. Where is it? The point is this. Here. This is the point. The internals. So inside there, that is a turbine. That is a turbine. One is, that's the B is for the five stage. The A is for the three stage. So this is what we're looking at. It's like a turbocharger, but it's electric and it's basically taking air from one end, this end, and that's a cooling end, and forcing it through the outlet tube, which connects to your hose and then connects that to your spray gun. And everything else is just sort of the marketing of the container. How do we want our container to look like? Whoever's using whatever motor they're using, are they making the motor or just putting it together? Because it, uh, the motor's what's important as far as what's in here. Can it provide the air? So, enough about that talk. And Put that over there. Spray gun. Okay, this is the spray gun you're gonna get. Alright, comes with that comes with that cup. Where's my spray gun? Oh yeah, it's over here. Alright, so difference is look, see this? It's a metal cup. It's old school style. It's loose right now, but you get the idea. This is the way I'm spraying. So this is gonna be my, this is, this is my first spray gun from the Avanti. Uh, this is a replacement HVLP turbine spray gun for the Avanti five stage or three stage. So I started spraying with this already. Uh, I'm gonna use this for my top coats. And this will be for my primer coats. And the adapter is this adapter. Because I'm running, I'm running a, this is the adapter by the way. This is what you're gonna want to get. So number, this is for the 2.0 adapter. This is the part number. Okay, this is the adapter. It's different from the adapter I currently have because the adapter I have, and it has to be longer because it's gotta clear the trigger. The short one would normally be for the top, but since this is only a bottom port feed type of a spray gun, which I like because it balances better and I don't have an extra fitting to have to clean up here, uh, this one has to clear the trigger. So that's why these are longer. And I have two, one for the 2.0 system for PPS and one for the Legacy. And Legacy was what they first came out with, but then the 2.0 is the more improvement. It's a little bit pricier in the liners. Uh, the blue ones for water, the regular ones for solvent, but I still use the Legacy, and at the Collision Center, still use the Legacy. Also, they tried different ones, cheaper versions, those leaked. <laughs> Anyways, 2.0 or the Legacy. So it's up to you to choose. I'm gonna be removing this. And if you're gonna spray it with this, okay, there's a one-way valve here. The spray gun gets air from the bottom, puts it through this port feed right there. It's gonna pressurize this cup and it's gonna make the paint get fed up through the tube. It's like helping gravity by giving it force, back force, or behind it force uh, to move the material. Here's something I'm just gonna quick add. So this cup is under pressure, right? 
Normally on a PPS cup, because it's under pressure, when you pull this, it opens the atmosphere back into the chamber. With this type of a cup, it's still under pressure. So you pull the trigger, stuff's coming out, watch. It's not even plugged in. See? Stuff spraying, stuff's coming out. So if you're gonna use this right off the bat, you will inquire some waste because the angle that you're trying to tip and suck up, you're gonna have a little bit of waste. That's just that's the way it works. But this one I'm gonna use here. See, it fits. Fits right on there, like no problem. Okay, and do a video with this later on. All right, now let's keep talking about the machine. All right, then the machine is in here. And how much does this weigh? Does this weigh a lot? Well, I'm lifting it up here. Right. Okay, not too bad. Box is empty. Get rid of the box. Now we got the machine. It's not too heavy. There you go. That's what it looks like. Get the camera and get a close up view. There we go. Okay. This, take the film. Let's take that out. Okay, it's sticky. Okay, this is not sticky, which is nice. Sticky is on that side, not sticky. This is your on and off switch. Okay. Fairly smooth toggle. All right, this is your airport. 15 amp breaker. This machine uses a 13 amp draw from the, off, from the wall. Well, it's got a 15 amp reset breaker right there. That is, uh, that is a filter alert warning. Just to, just to make sure we're giving good information here. That's the uh, air filter light. Okay, that goes on, it must mean you're pretty clogged up. And then over here, cord. That right there in the back is a bleed port for the air, extra air. Let's see what we can see inside there. See, there's a there's a turbine in there. See, it says a hot surface. When air flows, air, there's friction. Air produces heat. And that's how you unlock these filter cabinet thingies. All right. There's your filter. Right in there. So this being the thick side, this is uh, most likely the intake side. I'll have to look at the spec, but locks like this. You use two hands. There, that's locked. And this side over here would be the uh, the other side. Let me see. Get out real quick here. Yeah. All right. So this one just has a double stack fil filter. Yeah. He okay, says so the turbine is in there. There's another. There's another little filter right there to help with a. Looks like it's it's a three stage filtration. One in the beginning, this one and this one. This back lineup, those things there. And then I'm just gonna put my finger underneath here and put my thumb down here and lock it in place. Now, the hose is next. I'll put the Harbor Freight hose on just because it's a hose you're gonna get with a kit. See how it works. You gotta plug it in though. So I gotta get the plug. Now with the extension cord, I'm running an extension cord right now because I gotta run this extension cord over here. You wanna get an extension cord that's gonna support the load based on the amount of feet you got, all right? This is a 20 amp rated cord and it started at uh, 50 feet. I've shortened it for my needs. Where is the instruction manual? Okay, just to be clear, it does have a recommended 
cord and length and draw AWG because you want to at least comply so you don't have a lot of resistance okay recommended minimum wire gauge for extension cords so read that and make sure you're compliant you're compliant with that that's very important you don't want to create a lot of heat in your cords because there's a lot of resistance so oh wait whenever you got air trouble let's get some safety glasses all right before you turn on make sure you're in the off position it's going to be pulling stuff from intake so don't let anything get stuck on it like that plastic move this out of the way move this out of the way what goes in to your machine and through your hose will more likely stay in there. So if you're gonna be doing any detailing work and your, your detailing supplies are not compatible in a body shop safe environment, which means that's not gonna affect paint, you don't wanna have any of that stuff floating around in the air when you turn on your machine, because you're gonna suck it in and it's probably gonna coat the stuff. So always be conscious of that. Whether you're running, there's diesel exhaust, if there's a, a heater with diesel fuel, Certain things that are floating in the air, someone spraying some SiO2 detail spray or with silicones, if they're spraying and this is on, you're going to suck stuff in through here and put it through your hose. You don't want that. So be conscious of that. I'm going to turn this on. I'm not going to have the hose because this is how I tested it at, at, at the store this morning. I said, Brenda, can we just plug it in, turn it on? I'll know right away. And what I'm looking for is how much air does it feel like? Okay? And how quiet is it? This only has one, it only has an on and off. Uh, I was looking on the side, this kind of looked like it was a variable speed, but it wasn't very. There's no other, I was looking, is that a multi toggle? I don't know, maybe, wait, no, it's on and off. That's all it is. So that's just something that I noticed. It, I thought it was like a multi variable speed it's not so I'm going to turn it on fairly quiet not bad at all I'm going to turn on my other one just to give you a comparison I'm not going to adjust the levels at all I'm going to keep it at 0 dB on the editing so this is going to be at 0 dB on the sound scale for you to listen to and I'm going to put the other one on and listen to the other one. The garbage pit one. This is the sound of the garbage pit one. Make sure my hose is free. I'm going to roll stuff around. I got the end here. Much as that one is garbage pick, that one's not gonna. I'm not gonna feel put up with that type of sound for too long. It's good for what you know, the possibilities. What can a four stage do? So this one is actually much quieter. And I'm gonna move the hose, plug the hose in, plug in their hose. Okay, here's a tip when you spray and your hose is all wound up because you're too lazy to try to make it, you know, untangled or unrolled, every turn of that hose reduces your pressure. And what you want is pressure at the spray gun end because with every hose length, there's pressure drop and heat is generated on every turn. So that's why these people are gonna tell you, 
oh, you got to up your re your reducer temperature because of the heat and all that. Well, I've done it where you don't need to. If you feel like you need to slow down your, your paint drying so you want to use a slow reducer, that's one version of, of theory. But I've done it in hot temp with a fast hardener and you're going to get different levels of texture just based on that mixture combination. So you don't always have to say you got to use a slow reducer with these. You just don't. That's information that's going out there that's not necessarily true in most instances. I don't even use reducer in my clear for a lot of my mixes because I want to have more solids and less solvent. So that's why I want to get done with that. Okay, now let's uh, undo this hose. And the hose is a 27 foot length hose. Okay. 27 feet of hose length. That's pretty plenty long to go around the car, depending on how you place it within your spring room. I like to run a 15 foot hose because what I'm spraying is connected to that cup to coupler. My exhaust is over here, my test wall is over there. I'm spraying stuff over here, and I'm spraying stuff like right here. A car. You're going to be spraying the whole car, or you're only going to be spraying part of the car, or part of whatever you're spraying. So do you need a lot of hose? I don't think it's quite necessary. This is nice that it actually screws on like that. That's good. And then this hose needs to get unraveled. So I'm going to unravel it. Wow, there's a lot of, a lot of hose going to unravel it. I'm going to walk here to unroll it. Right now it has a lot of plastic stiff memory to it. It's like it's like all over the place. It's like a hose. It's a hose um, it's a hose cluster. <laughs> it's a hose cluster right there. <laughs> Here's what's cool. Fits nicely. How can I Oh yeah, see, these things are like garden hose. I'm gonna prove it to you right now. So these are the ends. These are the ends of my Flexilla that I cut off in order to couple it with my other hose couplers that I've been using. But this will fit right onto this Flexilla. Just like that. Garden hose dimension. Which is just kind of cool that it, it does that. So let me get the um and they actually oh look at that. So the whip end, the light, the flexible end also has a garden hose style connector. And this would fit to it. So you don't so to use this flexible end so you don't feel like you're struggling with a big hose because this is a big hose. And that's where, I think that's where moving into 2023 as compared to back then, that's where when I adapted the Flexilla setup, I felt like right at home spraying the way it would be spraying with a regular air hose for air compressor style. So once, this is not an air compressor. This is not an air compressor. There's no air tank to get compressed, to compress the air. This is just like a, it's like a turbine or turbo in your car. Turbo is gonna take the intake air, charge it with some PSI, your boost, and then give you the extra to give your, um, to give you a chance to blow your head gaskets. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you ever blowing your head gaskets, <laughs> Anyways, back to the topic. So I'm gonna put that here like this. Turn it on. Okay. 
Okay. You do a little spraying on the wall with some water. Here's one thing about water. If you're learning to spray, try some water, clean water, and water tends to flow at a certain rate that clear coat flows. It's about 17 seconds on a Zon 2 cup. A Zon 2 cup is what painters use, old school painters, where you would put, you would have a mixture of paint, dip this little tube thing in it with a little hole in the bottom, and you time how long it takes for all that to run out. Water takes about 17 seconds. So when you spray water on the wall, if you start to see you're able to do a certain look of gloss, that means, hey, this thing can do it. If this thing can't do it, you'll notice the water is just not glossing out. So that's how I've determined my test to, to see if the machine or the spray gun can atomize what I would be spraying a lot of would be clear coat, you know. Base coat is easy to spray. It's one on one mix. It's the easiest thing to do. But clear coats, depending on the mix, if it's a 4 1, if it's a 2 1, 2 1 1, 3 1, 3 1 1, 4 1, 4 1 plus 10%. Those types of materials tend to have a solids content. And solid content is just what is the solvent amount and what is the resin and the, the resin amount because of the resin amount or whatever the other thing that's not the solvent that evaporates into the atmosphere that's what's going to be the thickness of your paint if you have this much paint and 47% um, solvent well your paint is going to shrink down <laughs> because the solvent's got to evaporate and if you put another coat on top of that where you still got the solvent you're gonna you know solvent pop so uh, I'm gonna put some water in here scoot this over there so it's not sucking up water vapor because we don't want that ideally this should be outside of the spray room just scoot it over and spray a small amount because a small amount is all you need to do then I'll do a larger amount later You know, when people use these machines, the turbine, when people use the turbine machinery, they're painting like a kitchen cabinets or something. And they're putting the machine, or they're painting fences. They're putting a machine like over there, and then they're over here. So they're kind of spraying it within the realm of the area. Uh, since we're spraying water, I want to be at least cautious with that factor and not have it so close to the machine because it's brand new. So I'm going to go ahead and have a PPS cup. So right away, I'm going to go ahead and use a PPS. I'm not going to use a metal cup. Well, I guess I could. 2023, I'm running disposable liner in my 3M PPS setup with my specialized hose that I'm using. And I'll talk about that in some other video. But I'm just going to fill this up. Make sure you put the liner in here. Fill it up with some water. Fill it to the top. Let's cap it off. Cap my bottle off. Put this on here like this. Good. Hook it up to my spray gun. So this is ready. Turn on the machine and are you able to see that on the wall? Yep, you can see that, it's good. Turn on the machine. See now my hose is all over the place. It's like it still has hose memory. You're gonna to wanna to see what I'm dealing with right now because this is not what you want when you're spraying. You do not want this much hose restriction, okay? But for the sake of this test experiment, I'm just gonna go for it. And I'm also gonna be conscious of the amount of water vapor I'm putting into the air because I don't want too much water vapor that Vaping over here, you know, scooting over. 
but it should be because it's HVLP turbine. Turbine. Here we go. Turn it on. Turn on. Got a little bit of a sputter. Got a little bit of a sputter because the liner needs to get sucked up to where there's no air in between the water and the thing. So you have to pull the trigger to sort of suck it up a little bit. Now it's ready to go. There's no sputter. So let's just check it. A lot of air flowing. Glossy. Glossy. Now this has paint, but look at the drop. Fine ionization in the drop. Real fine atomization. This is what you're looking for, is you want a good, fine droplets of water atomization. When you're spraying on something that's smooth, like clear coat. See how? Get fine atomization of drops of water down to the tiniest bit. So when you can see the tiniest bit, that means that spray gun is going to be able to spray clear coat because it's going to be able to atomize that clear coat. So that's what you want to look for. And also when I'm spraying over here, I want to get gloss. Because it's not going to gloss, it's going to bead on clear coat. But on this paper here, it'll gloss. If I get new paper, it'll gloss even better. It's going to gloss with some new paper. Gloss better. Alright, I get to get some tape too. Here's the tape. Now it's not going to last too long because there's water behind it. But I just want to show you that. Alright. So. Here's how I adjust my spray gun. Okay, doing this trick. Go all the way down like this. Let's go boom, boom. That's where I start. Then I take it to the wall, pull the trigger, and see how the paint or the material is reacting on whether it's glossing or not. There's a fine line between too dry, medium, glossy and over wet. What you want is glossy, but when you get too glossy, it can run. So you want to get glossy, but if it's not glossy enough, it'll be dry. So you're going to walk that fine line of where the way you're moving and the way it's spraying, this machine has one fixed setting on or off. The amount of adjustability is from back here. This will help reduce the air. It's like an air choker. So minus, plus, full wide open. And when you start to see that it's either spraying too wet, then you gotta reduce your mixture. If it's too dry, you increase. And through time, you'll just be able to get to used to like, all right, yeah, a little more, okay, no big deal, yeah. You know, that's just the way that works. So I'm gonna do it right now. Boom, boom. Glossy, right away. Very glossy. This is gonna work. But it's a little wet because it's starting to run. So how many turns is that? Here's what I can do. I can index it. I can mark it with a Sharpie. So if I put the mark right here is the index mark and then mark this right here okay so now I can tell that all right how many turns is that out I'll just tighten it up it's like one and a little bit so one little bit is a good place to start with a boom boom uh, I know I need to lean it out a little bit so I'll lean on the flies and spraying it and I'll just know that it's good or not. <laughs> turn on the machine here. It turns out just a little bit. 
Still glossy. More. Down work. Glossy. Yeah. So I just basically leaned it out by a hair. So the turns out for spraying water or would be more like a medium to high solids clear would be that's there. So it's almost like um, not 75%, it's more like 80%. Or that much turns out. Not three quarters, but a little more than three quarters turns out to give what I think would be a workable for most clear coats right, right away. Just like that. Now that I sprayed water in here, I gotta clean this out really well. It's got stainless steel passages, so it's fine, but you don't wanna mix water with, with what you're spraying. You wanna make sure the gun is clean and dry before you put real material in there. And yeah, so this is how it works. Um, I guess might as well just hook up the other cup so you can see how that cup works with what you would get in the kit. Because then I can kind of show you the, uh, the differences on how that one works. You know, spraying it, with, spraying it with the PPS, I can spray upside down. I can spray, I can turn to go upside down and spray like that, boom. With a siphon cup, your intake is at the bottom. So if you flip it, you're gonna suck air, not material. That's why PPS comes in handy for everything, pretty much. It's just, it's in the 2023 realm. The, the future of H, it, futuristic HVLP is, is that type of a setup. I'll have to clean all this stuff really well, but I'm gonna hook up there. Here's the other thing too is as much as this is not recommended to blow through, you can take your air hose and you can either take your lips to it and shield it with your fingers or not. It's flowing in the correct direction, which is into this. If this was accidentally flipped around, it would not, and that would be wrong. You'd get no pressure in here. You want pressure in the cup. So make sure you are, know that the flow is going in. All right, let me add some water to this one. Just gonna add some water in here. But that much, it's not a lot. Not a lot, but that's how I'm gonna put it. Tighten this up, real good. They give you a wrench for this. This is the wrench, they give you an extra one-way valve too. I already have another video on how to clean that spray gun, take it apart. But right now, this is just to, uh, you know, you get the machine, you want to start playing with it. Like this. All right. Just because there's threads here on this one, don't remove that because you might inadvertently cause a leak with inside here. Just, you don't need to unscrew that. Just tighten this up so that's tight. And then put the uh, thing here. This is good to go. So how simple and easy it is. Hook up the air hose. Turn on the machine. And remember, let's check this. Too open, all right? Then go boom, boom, start wide open. Nice and glossy.
But if you're not used to, if you're if you come from the from the auto side and you're used to, used to a, a gravity feed, you're gonna feel like this is old school. And but this still works. It 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 does. It puts the balance where it needs to be. That's below your wrist. If it's up here and all this weight, your wrist has to fight that motion. This is just better balanced with, with this style cup. And this is how they used to do it back in the day. But this cup is, I think, is old school. Although, look how well it just, right out of the gate, you can start painting. You know? That's glossy. That's like glossy, glossy. There is a little space in the back where they keep extra needles and tips. So that's a 1.8 air cap, nozzle, needle set. And they have room to put another one here, so I'm actually going to order the 0.8 needle and nozzle set. Uh, because the 0.8 would be great for base coats. And I like the 1.3, you know. For a clear coat and base coat, it works too. So this is what I'm running for 2023 and beyond, right? This comes with a kit like this. This is what I modded with PPS, my own air tube setup. But I'm running two guns, two spray guns. I'm gonna switch out the cup to PPS, so it'd be like this. But that's not gonna fit, so. I'm going to have to do a little mod here. Um, uh, or either way, this is what you would get in this five-stage turbine. If you get another gun, they're on sale for $79.99, but you got to buy your own 3M PPS adapter, your own pressured cup, and you buy got to buy the liners. But that's, uh, that's the video. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'm going to... Clean these spray guns now.